So, you know, one of the, the elements in your biography that, that comes up a lot and is quite impressive is your civil rights experience, your protesting experience, your, you know, being arrested and, you know, standing up for it. But, you know, during the Occupy protests, I don't feel like we saw a lot of you. I mean, I, you didn't go out and get arrested at Occupy. Where, where were you during Occupy? I mean, why didn't we see you more? Who's the we now? What's that? Who, who are you speaking of as the we? We or whoever went down there. I mean, was I was down, down there? we were down there quite a lot, actually. We were, I mean, we were well, down there. I was in Washington, and I was at the Washington Occupy. But uh, uh, when, let me tell you a little bit about my sense of Occupy, if, you, if, if that's what you're asking. Please, sure. Uh, obviously, when it started, we, it was very energetic, very uh, energizing. And I went, I mean, I was in Washington, and I went down, and uh, we... Uh, we spent time at the Occupy site in what I think they call Liberty Plaza. There were two sites in Washington. Uh, I was there, and uh, I, I was there several times. I was there with, uh, and you know, Medea Benjamin, who she is. Mm -hmm. She, Code Pink, she was there the night one night when I was there, and we talked about how Congress. Uh, I mean, I was going to introduce a bill, for example, that had all of the occupied demands in a bill that we could call Occupy America and say, hey, you can rally around this. And then the Progressive Caucus met with about eight or, we, we asked eight or ten, we asked the Occupy people to come to see us. These are 25, we had about 25 or 30 of the most progressive people in Congress sat down with about six or eight or ten of the occupiers. It was disastrous. Uh, I mean, I came away so depressed. Uh, what can we do to help? We don't want your help. Does that, who was saying we don't want your help, the occupiers? Right. Okay. Uh, what are your demands? We don't have any demands. In fact, we're not even we're not even leaders. We can't speak to you. Uh, did you ever see the uh, YouTube uh, picture when uh, John Lewis went to try to speak at the Atlanta Occupy? Mm -hmm. You should look at that. Go to YouTube, Occupy Atlanta or something. John John Lewis, I mean a a, a certified American hero, right? Mm -hmm. He asked to speak. First, they had a, they had a forty or forty five minute discussion whether he should speak. <laughs> A lot, of, a lot of hands went up to say, yeah, let him speak, but one person blocked them. Is that the word? They blocked yeah, yeah. They blocked. So then they had a discussion of blocking. And then they had another vote. It looked to me that he won, but there were two blockers. So they wouldn't allow him to speak. It was the most, dis I, I could not believe the discussion. It was so depressing. And but anyway, our discussion, went, and, I, and I said, I finally said, you know, I looked around and I said, there's about a thousand years of history at this table of demonstrating, protesting, being in jail being on the same side that you are in every issue. There ought to be some mutual respect here. I mean, we respect you. We are really excited about what you're doing. But you don't seem to have, well, you're politicians, you know, and we don't care about you. So I, I just, I, I was so, I, I, start, I got up and started leaving and then, but you can't help us in one thing, somebody said. The park police want, want to get rid of us and we need, I said, you want our help in that? He just said we couldn't do it. Take a flying leap. But I would have told them. That's what I. But and then what? Well, then it, it got worse because then they said, "Oh, by the way, we've run, we've run out of cash. Can you help us with donations?" I said, "You want my dirty capitalist money?" <laughs> I mean, it was so. I. They didn't want any help. They didn't want. They didn't have any historical understanding of, of, of what people have done in this regard. They had no interest in working with us. And I said, "Look, if you want to stop the war, who's going to stop it? We are. If you want more money for this, who's going to give more money? We are." If, if you want single-payer health care, who's going to do it? We are. you got to work with it. And I figure over time they would get a little more sophisticated and, you know, learn. and never, it never happened as far as I could tell. So I, I got, and then, you know, somebody from the local people came to see me about uh, speaking. And they said, we can't guarantee that they'll listen to you. And I said, well, why should I go? I mean, there's no, I don't want to fight with them. If they don't want to hear elected official, that's fine. But no reason for me to go. And some of them wanted me to, they were going to elect me shadow mayor or something. And, and then they got ostracized by the other group because they were talking to me. I, I, it went, it was, it was, I, I didn't see it. It, 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 it. If there are no, if there's no program, if there are no demands, if there's no issues, if there's no leadership, what's going to happen? Uh, I understand the anarchy part of it, and I was energized by it. But at some point, you got to tell me what you want. How do you organize? I gave him an organizing tool. I said, I'll put all the things in a bill. You can organize around HR 55,000, or we'll call it a good number. Nobody wanted. And I said, okay, well, yeah. i got to keep doing what I'm doing. I can't 
waste my time. You know, I'd ask Nathan Fletcher the same question, so I'll ask it to you. How would you have handled the Occupy protesters differently from how Mayor First, I would have gone down and talked to them. <laughs> they would have booed me or whatever. Second, I would have made sure that uh, the police did not evict them. But I would have worked with the occupiers on a couple of issues uh, about mutual respect, as it were. I mean, you know, there there is a, a concert hall there. Well, make sure people can get there, clean up so it'll be nice, you know, hand out literature if you want to, but, you know, respect the people who are going to the concert hall. We should, we'll respect your free speech, but you have to keep it sanitary and keep it cleaned up, and we'll do whatever we can to help you. You have a right to be here, and I'm going to... I'm going to, uh, you know, fight like hell for the free speech and your ability to be here. So I would have, and, and kept that police presence out of there. I mean, it was, no police presence. Yes, there was. No, maybe yeah. you would. No, you, you would have, have said no. no police. Oh, I, no, I would have kept. I mean, if I would have, no, I would have kept them, because the police just exacerbate the situation. This, this all could have been worked out. I mean, whatever. There was no problem per se that I had the police and nobody was Are you are you well, saying you would have had the really. police sort of on alert or available a little bit farther away? Of course. Just not right there on site, right, right in your face. And work with people to say, look, this is a public square, you have right to free speech. Other people have a right to go to the concert. Keep it clean, please. Uh, keep it orderly. Uh, police yourself. Uh, we'll get we'll get restrooms in here, uh, you know, to make it more convenient. And there was no sense of uh, of violence or anything else that the police had to be there for. So, I mean, I saw it. I, I was down there. I mean, I didn't see anything. And do you think it would have just sort of died its Probably. own death eventually? Probably. I mean, I don't know. That's. Yeah. But I would have not used the city power to, to get rid of it. I would have encouraged it.